Hello, this is David Dodds with songwritersmarketplace.com. And in this tutorial, we'll be going over how to build a free WordPress musician website. And we'll cover separate step-by-step -step items, first of which will be planning and organizing what you need before you start. And the reason we're going to do that is because if you ahead of time organize and gather your information, maybe put it into a folder. When you go to start constructing uh, your website, it'll be so much easier, enjoyable, it'll go smoother, faster, if you have the items all ready to go and you know where you can go just to find everything, whether it be an MP3, a photograph that you're going to use, a copy of your bio, whatever it may be. Uh, then number two, I'll take you into the back end, uh, the administration area, and we'll go into the area where you can look at themes. And there's a whole variety of themes you can look through, uh, which you should be able to find something that is attractive to you, uh, has a style that you would like to uh, use for your site that you can customize and change into your music site. So we'll be doing that. And then number three, we'll be adding the free plugins that I have used in the demo site that uh, we'll be taking a look at shortly. And I'll tell you what the names of all those plugins are and how you go about downloading them into your site. And number four, once we have that all complete, organizing your materials, picking out your theme, getting your plugins all loaded in, We'll be uh, making it all work. And uh, with that being said and done, let's uh, head on over to the demo musician site and take a look at how that looks. And I'll explain the different areas of it and uh, how you can set your site up to do the same thing. Here we go. Okay, here we are over at uh, musicianwebsite.info, my demonstration site. And as you can see, I have put together a musician website using a fictitious um, artist named Johnny Rocker. And what I did is I went out and there's several sites that you can find online where you can get uh, Creative Commons photos and illustrations. I found this one that I was able to use and then using a program for images I just superimposed a, uh, his name, Johnny Rocker, over it. And I wanted to use this for the header. Now, this theme that I picked out uh, for this demonstration is named appropriately Songwriter Theme. <laughs> and uh, it, it offers you the option of putting a big header like this. And so I created a header image of Johnny Rocker that, I, uh, that I'm using for this website. Now, depending on what theme, you can pick out any theme and customize it with the plugins with, that I'm going to demonstrate for you. Um, and you can turn it into a musician's site. Now, when you have the site set up, as this one is, you have the home page, obviously, here. On this home page, I have the uh, WordPress settings uh, set to show the latest post. In other words, it's like looking at your blog on the home page. We have three posts right now that display, and we have a sidebar on the right side where you can put uh, whatever widgets in that area of items that you'd like to have show up on the pages of your website. Uh, and then up here on the main navigation menu bar, uh, the first page we have on the uh, left side is bio. If I click on bio, you'll see I just put together a simple bio page, a big illustration of Johnny Rocker and uh, his bio under it. And at the top, I inserted a, a quotation. It, this could be from a review. It could be from uh, some uh, uh, you know, interviews, uh, uh, items uh, that, that people have written about you, anything that you want to put in there. It helps to highlight a little bit better 
give a little bit more pizzazz splash to your bio, makes it a little bit more visually exciting. Good thing to do there. Um, the second link here on the menu is the blog, which you saw pretty much how that looked on the home page. But you want to have a blog, I think. You should take the time to write some articles. Uh, it's good for fan engagement. And you can use this, in this case, to highlight your uh, upcoming concerts, tour schedule, uh, local venues you're playing. And you could talk about them there and put the schedule uh, included with these blogs, which you can see a little bit later in this tutorial how that works. Uh, music page. Here, I am using SoundCloud primarily. If you aren't a member or you don't have an account with SoundCloud, I would highly recommend if you're a singer, songwriter, performer that you do. Uh, SoundCloud is a great musician community and it's a great way to showcase what you do. And it has one of the best players on the internet. Uh, when you have an account there, you can get embeddable players that you can install on your website. And with WordPress, it's very easy by using the SoundCloud short code, which is what I use. Uh, that plugin enables you to display what you see here on the sound uh, music page. The first one is the large image player. Underneath that, we have the smaller image player. You can put one song or several songs under it. And I also have on this site the Q audio player, that's C-U-E. And it also displays a nice image at the top you see here. And same thing with the SoundCloud. You can put one song or several songs under it. It, it displays nice, plays nice, and uh, they both, both work well. And I would recommend both of those. We have the video page. Now here, of course, Johnny Rocker is a fictitious uh, singer-songwriter, so I obviously don't have any videos of him. But what I did, uh, I had a, uh, a site set up that I was running in, in my hometown of San Diego, California, where I live. And uh, me and my partner, Ken Lenig, we had songs from the space, we called that. And that was where we had local singer-songwriters uh, come in, and we recorded their performances, just them acoustically. And I'm using those videos now to uh, plug into here to demonstrate how you, on your site, with your own videos, uh, can easily put those in and how it will look. Now, you don't even need a plug-in to do this. You just have to take the, for instance, from YouTube, take the URL and put it in the, uh, paste it into the, the WordPress page, and it will pull in the info from YouTube and display uh, the video as you see here. Uh, very easy to do, looks great. Okay, next we have the gallery. Now the gallery, any pictures you have, your, your press photos, your studio shots, your live performance shots, uh, anything that you might want to put on here. You just go in, make a gallery page, uh, put your, uh, your uh, photos into the media gallery, and once they're set up, they're going to display in a very nice uh, arrangement on your website. And with one plugin I also installed, you get a nice light box on a photo. You will have a nice light box, and you can go right through it. And it highlights each photo really nicely. Gives your fans a nice up, up close and personal look at all of your uh, illustrations and photographs. Then just click outside the box to get out. Okay, next. Um, we have the shows. Now, this can be called calendar or your tour guide or whatever you might want to call it. I just have it for shows. And it uh, will display all of your upcoming shows local at local venues or if you're going on a, on a road tour, where you're going to be, what, uh, where you're going to be playing, what you're going to, when time you're going to be playing, what date. And it also has the ability to uh, 
uh, have a link to click on where they can go and buy tickets, which we'll cover more in the latter part of this tutorial when we go through the setup of all this. You also can put a digital shop. Here's where you can sell your digital music downloads. And if you have any little ebooks or guides or any type of information that you might uh, or that your fans might like to have, you you can upload those onto your site where they can be then downloaded by your fans. You can make it free or you can charge for that. Uh, it's a good way to collect emails from your fans also also to build your uh, mailing list. And the same thing with your purchases. Uh, works very well, this plugin. And so uh, you can have a very nice digital download shop. Now we go to the store. Now this plugin, uh, I use the Equid. It's called Equid, E-C-W-I-D. I believe that's E-C-W-I-D. Uh, store plugin. It's free. Works really well. Very easy to set up. The only thing you can't do with the free version is sell digital products, and which is why I have the other plugin for the digital shop, uh, the digital download plugin. But uh, you can upgrade the store and also sell digital product on here. But for selling your merch, uh, t-shirts, uh, hoodies, hats, you know, ball caps, fedoras, uh, different items, you know, CDs, it uh, works very well. For instance, if you want a hoodie, you can just click on the buy now. It opens up a uh, preview panel where they can select uh, color, sizes, and once that they're satisfied, they click on add the bag. Same as the shopping cart. And uh, you can click to open the bag to see how it uh, has entered here. And from there, you can go through the checkout process and purchase item, or your, your fans, who's ever on your site, can go through the checkout and purchase the item. We're not going to do that right now, of course, so we're going to just clear the bag off again. And next, we're going to go to the press kit. Press kit, probably the most important thing you can have on here. Uh, I mean, your music and, and photos and everything are important, but a press kit is where someone can go directly and look at your uh, bio, as you can see right here. They can look at uh, any press quotes that you've uh, submitted or, or displayed on here. Uh, review excerpts. And you can put your calendar here also, as well as a uh, contact form where it's, it's convenient for them right from the uh, press kit if they wanted to contact you, send you an email. Um, next, under all that, we have an area where you can just upload a compressed zip folder that you can include your high-res, that's high-resolution press photos. Uh, for publicity, and those can be downloaded and, and used electronically by somebody, or they can be printed out if need be. You also can put your broadcast quality MP3s in this download folder, and your bio in PDF format, which is very easy for someone to go ahead and print out. Now down here, you can also include your booking uh, information if you have a booking agent taking care of that for you and include their name and email, website con uh, information where they can contact them. And if you have a management company, publicist, there again, put their name in there, their email, website contact information. And the last thing on the menu bar up here is contact. And that's just the contact form. Somebody can reach you. Um, also, I wanted to show you that at the top of your sidebar, this area right here, you have your social icons, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, YouTube, Pinterest, uh, uh, Instagram, email, and RSS feed so they can subscribe to your feed if they choose to. And uh, it's very simple. They, they, they click on those and it will go right to that, to that spot in a, a pop-up window. And then they can promote you. Pass the word around. Uh, you also can put your upcoming show schedule on the sidebar. You can put uh, anything from your 
shop that you might want to give a little extra push to, like a, like a CD, for instance, in this case, where they can add to the bag and, and, and purchase that. You can put players, either the SoundCloud or the Q player on the sidebar, and uh, any digital downloads can be also placed in the sidebar. Really, virtually anything you want to put, you can put in the sidebar. So that pretty much covers, we'll go back to the uh, home page here. That pretty much covers uh, a quick overview of what I've put together using a free theme, all free plugins. As I mentioned before, the only thing that you're going to be uh, paying for is your hosting account. And if you get the basic 12-month plan, that is basically going to cost you about 20 cents a day is what it breaks down to. So for 20 cents a day, you can have your own musician website. You have full control over it and uh, do whatever you want and you own it. So with that all being said and done, I think now it's about time to uh, get into which plugins we're using and how would we go about configuring this website and putting it together. So um, here we go. Okay, the first thing we'll want to do at this point is go over your planning and organizing of what you need before you start. So you might ask, what items do you want on your website? It may help to first decide what you want on your site menu bar. Once you decide the menu, then you only have to fill in the contents. For example, on the Johnny Rocker site, I display the following. Bio, blog, music, videos, gallery, shows, digital shop, store, press kit, and a contact form. So, once you have that figured out, you just need to look at these different items on the menu bar and know what you need to put in there. In, a, in the bio, you're going to need your bio, which consists of your photo and the copy. Uh, in, in your blog, you're going to have to have a couple of articles at least. So you're going to need the copy and some photos or illustrations to go along with those. Music, videos, your gallery page, uh, even your store, your shop, you're going to need all of the images, the photographs, the videos themselves, the files, or the uh, URLs to YouTube or Vimeo, wherever your video is, uh, is located at and uh, your press kit, all the items, if you have any special quotes or reviews, anything that you want to put into a page, uh, you might want to have that easily accessible. And also the contact information of a manager, uh, your publicist, anyone like that. If you have all those items ready, and you can create a folder on your desktop where you can place all the items you'll need when you start building your website. And if you have that done, once you start putting the site together, it will be so much easier and smoother for you as you go through. And you'll have it all organized. There won't be any thinking involved. You can just put the pieces of the puzzle together. So next we'll want to discuss choosing your theme. When deciding on a theme, you should consider the following. One, it must be fully responsive and look good on any size device. Two, try choosing a theme that has many of the features you want built into it already, such as custom header and menu options, multiple sidebar areas, custom logo, custom background image and color, color scheme options, custom font styles. The more built-in features the theme has, the less plugins you'll need to install. Number three, make sure the theme design serves your purpose. You may not want a magazine, portfolio, or e-commerce style design, for instance, so it may be best to find a simple blog style theme where you can create multiple pages and post articles. Number four, the theme you choose should come with full documentation 
and preferably support from the theme author or an active support forum. A good thing to do when you're looking at themes, when you find one that you like, is go into the uh, review area. Read the reviews and comments that other people have made about this theme. And how recent and new is the theme to begin with? When was the last time it was upgraded, updated? Uh, but read the reviews, what other people say, and what type of support that these people are getting. If you have a lot of complaints uh, about the uh, theme itself or about the support or lack thereof, then you may want to pass on that particular theme and go looking for another one. Uh, good idea. So now let's go over and I will get into actually looking for a theme on the back end of your admin site. And I'll show you just how to do that. All right. Here we are over at uh, one of my test demo sites that I use, viewanddo.com. And we are on the front end of it right now. I am logged into it, as you can see, by the admin bar, block bar across the top. So right now, we'll go up here and we'll go to the dashboard to start with. Now, this is a bare bones theme uh, uh, install of WordPress, rather. It comes with, a, uh, with the 2015 WordPress theme. It has one uh, default post and one comment on it. There's no pages. There's no other plugins other than we'll go down to plugins. Installed plugins. It has a Kismet. And I also have an ultimate maintenance mode since I use this for uh, demonstration purposes. I have a, uh, this plugin prevents people from seeing to getting in to the site without a password. It's just for my purposes, so. Uh, but that won't be when you install your theme, you won't see ultimate maintenance mode as the default. Anyway, but we do have a kismet, but there's nothing else on here. Um, so what we want to do is, in this instance, we're going to go into appearance on the left sidebar here and go over to themes and click on themes. Now, once we're in the theme area, and you can see that this is the only theme I have, 2015 by WordPress team. Okay, but on the top left side over here, Add New. I want to click on Add New. And you can search themes in this area. These are all free themes. A lot of them are free for the basic theme, but if you want more features, you'll have to upgrade them, uh, and, and then you'll be paying some money for the theme. Sometimes it's, it's well worth it. Uh, these themes are, uh, some of them can be quite good. But for our intents and purposes, is we're looking for free items, free themes, free plugins, just to show you how you can build a very nice, free musician WordPress site. So anyway, at the top here, you can search by featured, popular, latest and then they have a feature filter right here where you can put in all types of parameters if you want to narrow down your your search i've tried using this before it doesn't it seems to make more of a, a complicated procedure to find in a theme to me than it's worth so i typically don't use the uh, feature filter um i like to just think of um come up with my own words, keywords, phrases I'm looking for, uh, which is pretty much how I found the theme that we're using. I came over to uh, the search over here, the search themes, and I typed in songwriter, thinking what might show up under songwriter. And as you see, songwriter theme came up, only one theme. So I thought it looked pretty good, and that's what I went ahead. and. Uh, and installed. But you can search for any other theme that you want. Uh, you could just put blog. 
and see what comes up. Now you have all these other themes here. Now, when you see a theme, you can click like this middle one here, Blog Central. You can click on Preview. And it will bring up Blog Central. And over here in the left, it will give a uh, description of this theme and tell you pretty much what's on it. Like in this case, it, it comes with three predefined demos, five color schemes, unlimited color options, three page header layouts, three blog post listing layouts, and much more, of course. And uh, so it, using th this uh, process or technique, uh, you can go through different themes and read what they have and look at how they're laid out, how you might want to customize them and go from there deciding on what theme you would like to use. Um, and there's a lot of themes that you'll actually become overwhelmed looking at the themes. But just keep in mind the look that you want, what you want on the theme. Don't get overcomplicated. Now there's some themes out there that are really fancy right now. They have background images, they have parallax uh, background photo view that you can use when you, you've seen them when you pan up and down the page and these images are in the background and the front, the front uh, information glides over the background and you're going, ooh, ah. And, but you know, I find that a lot of that stuff is distracting. And when you go to a website and you want to find out information, like when you're on your, someone comes to your music site, they want to learn about you. They want to look at your videos, your photos. They want to hear your music. They want to go in your shop. They want to purchase things. They don't want to have to struggle figuring out how this thing navigates, how they find their way around. Uh, so I don't really, recommend going with one of those. Uh, try and find something that is responsive, looks good on mobile devices as well as desktop devices, is very easy to navigate, and you have enough design options on it where you can make it look uh, really nice uh, and Get your point across. You'll, you'll, you'll look good, and it'll be easy for people to find what they want and won't get frustrated and leave, and leave you. And there you go. So with that being said about themes, that's my opinion. Uh, we're going to go back up here, and I'm going to do that search once again for songwriter. And there we have it. So now once you find the theme, in this case, oh, I want this songwriter theme, you simply have to click Install. Now once you click Install, it will put it right onto your, uh, your WordPress install. Now before you activate it, sometimes it's a good idea to click Live Preview. And you can see what it looks like. Make sure it's not going to screw up your site at all. And um, this looks like it should be okay, and of course it is because I've used this already. So I'm going to go ahead up here and say save and activate. Okay, now you're looking at the front end of my site, which still says view and do. And we have one post, which is hello world, which is the default post by WordPress. And so at this point, it doesn't look too impressive. But from here on, we're going to get into setting up our pages and posts and installing photographs and MP3s and videos and all that. And you'll start seeing the shape, uh, the, or rather the theme, take shape uh, and turn into the demo that you saw earlier. Okay, so now we're going to go into the admin area. So we'll go up to the top left here. I just want to click on Dashboard. Now that we're in the admin dashboard, we want to take a look at this themes 
um, options. So you want to go down to Appearance, go off to the right, down the column, and you'll see Theme Options. And just click on that. Okay, now here's the Songwriter Theme Options. And you might want to, depending on any theme that you get, read the welcome message that they might have. But read through these. It's, I find it's best, you know, you want to jump around and see what's this and what's that. But it's better to take it one step at a time, go through it chapter by chapter, you might say. So we'll click on general settings first. Now, the theme color right now is blue, which is the default. Now, this theme gives you three options, blue, green, red. And you might want to experiment with those. I can show you how to do it in the using the customization feature that WordPress has now, where you can be on the front end and do that. Uh, I'll show you that a little bit later, but first we'll go on through the uh, the settings in the admin area here. So we'll leave this on blue default. Uh, we'll leave the uh, image size on auto. The uh, right sidebar, we'll leave it as a right sidebar. And display breadcrumb. Pretty much leave all of these settings alone. Leave them on default. Favicon URL. If you have a Favicon, uh, you can upload that here. And if you don't know what a Favicon is, it's when you're on a when you're on your browser and you go to a website and you look at the address bar, uh, you see the URL of the website, and there's that little image. Like right now, if you go up to the very top corner up here and you see this little, it's like a round globe. Well, that's a that's a favicon, and you can put your own favicon design if you choose. So when people go to your website, it will display up on the bar there. Not real uh, important, but it, it's kind of a nice little feature if you want to do that. Anyway, uh, we haven't changed anything there. So if we did, we would have clicked on save all changes. Now be very careful on these themes. This gray button here. Reset to default settings. If you click on that, if you've made a lot of changes, and not only to this tab here, this page, if you click on that, it will put the whole theme default setting back in place. You'll lose everything you've set. You don't want to click this ever unless you absolutely want to get rid of everything and start over. So, but you want to click on save changes here if you've made any changes in this particular area. Now we'll go to header settings. Now the header settings, you can tell it to display everywhere, which will be on every page in your site. Every page you go to will have the same header. Or it gives you the option of only on the home page. Now with this theme, I found that I only wanted it on the home page. When I tried putting the header on every page, every time you went to a page, you had to scroll down to see what was on the page because the header is so big. It's very distracting, kind of irritating. So I would set this um, on this particular theme to only on home page. I don't have a logo URL. I'm just going to use the text, which will change a little bit down the road here. Uh, display site description, same thing. I'm just going to leave that on. Uh, display for the text because we're not using a logo. Uh, display search form, that's on this theme. It's on the top right side. We'll just leave that there for now. And we're not going to use the carousel. It does have a carousel if you want to use that. Uh, this contact information, it's not for a form, which I wish it was for a contact form, but it actually just puts your address, email, phone number if you want on the top left side of the header area, which I prefer not to to have. But I'm going to save these changes because I I did change the one setting for the header. Okay, post page setting. We'll probably just leave all this default for now. I'm just going to take a quick look down here. Uh, we'll leave these all default. These things can be changed more where you can see how they look once you have data, data information 
displayed on your site. But when you have nothing on the site yet, it's pretty difficult to change these settings and see what they're doing. Same with post entry settings. So we're going to leave that pretty much default right now. Fonts, other settings, we have widgets menu. Now header image is the one that we will change right now. So if you want to click on under other settings, header image. Okay, now that we're in the header image area, uh, you'll see that it suggests that you have a suggested width of 1800 pixels, which uh, you'll have to do for it to work correctly. Uh, with different screen resolutions, it might not look right. The image might not go to the edge. Um, so do it at least 1800 pixels or even a little bigger, uh, maybe. But, uh, once you've picked out your image and cropped it to the right size and you have it ready, you simply come down here and click on browse and it goes right to my folder that has all my items, images, photos in it. And I am just going to look for the, uh, Johnny Rocker header image, which is right here. I'll select that, open and then click the Upload button, and there it is. I don't need to crop it, it's already at the right size, so I'm going to click on Skip Cropping Publish Image As Is. Okay, that's in, then we come down to the bottom here, click Save Changes. Okay, now, if we go back to the front end, there it is. You see that uh, we have now a big header image of Johnny Rocker and the default post, Hello World post that came with your theme when you uh, downloaded it, installed it. So, now the next thing that we want to do is go back into the admin area and we are going to create our pages. So you go down the left column of pages, add new. Now to enter a page, you simply click on the uh, title bar up here. And our first page that I'll enter would be bio. And at this point, all you want to do is put the page title, come over here to the right, and click publish. Leave everything else the same. And then you put in your second page. Now on the menu bar, blog is actually the second item, but blog is not a page. Blog is actually a category where you put post on. Uh, and we'll set that up in the uh, category area after the pages. I'll show you how to do that. So this, the next page I'd want to do after blog would be music. Just type music in the uh, page title area and publish. Now you do this for each page that you're going to have up on your menu, on your uh, navigation bar, and I won't put you through the boredom of watching me set all the pages up, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and set the rest of them up, and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to uh, set up your category, then we'll set up the uh, menu. Okay, so now all the pages have been set up. So we're going to go over now to where it says post in the left column again. And go over to the right and down to categories. Now as with every WordPress install, there's one default um, post on it, which is under the category uncategorized. So what you want to do is either add a new category that you want to use. In this case, we want to add blog. Or you can edit uncategorized. And that's what I'm going to do in this case. I'm just going to click edit. And I'm going to change that to simply blog. Whoops, got a couple of slashes in there. And also the slug, all lowercase for the slug. It'll add that automatically if you leave it blank when you save. 
but uh, I'll type that in. Okay, update. And now we have our category. So now we're going to appearance down to menus. Now that we're in menu, uh, first thing you want to do is put the name of the menu. Uh, since this, this uh, site is just going to have one menu, let's just call it uh, main menu. And then go ahead and save. All right, now to put the items on it, you can see the pages that we created over here. And if you go down to Categories and open that up, the drop-down, you can see Blog in there. So there's our category. So what you want to do is tick the boxes. You might want to click View All. Make sure you have all the pages. Now, this, for some reason, I have two bios, but we're only going to use one. Um, I have a home in here also, which is a actual, uh, actually, it's a, it's a custom link. But this theme uses a little house icon for home, and I don't want both of them on the menu bar, so we're not going to include that. So we'll just go ahead, and we're going to take bio. We want contact, digital shop, gallery, music, a couple of musics. I think I was experimenting before I did this video and didn't take uh, out some of these things. But you just want one music, press kit, shows, store, videos. And then you want to click add to menu. And it puts them all over there. Then go down here to categories, open that up. Tick the box for blog, add to menu. All right, they're all in. Now you want to organize them. It's just drag and drop. Uh, at the top, we want bio, which is good. It's there already. Contact will be the far right on the menu on the site, so we want to bring contact down to the bottom, which is actually the far right. Blog, that's the second item under bio. Third item should be music. We'll move music up to there. And videos. And then gallery. Then we have shows, digital shop. Digital shop's good. Uh, then press kit will be next to last and store there. Now, one thing I want to mention, when you drag these around, make sure they're all in line because up here, like blog, if that was in this position, that will show up on the menu as a drop-down under bio. In other words, you click on bio, do a drop-down menu, and you would have blog under that. If you had music, maybe even staggered under that, you'd have a drop-down there, or you'd have two items in the drop-down under bio. And that's how you make drop-down menus, very simple. We want all these lined up. Okay, next thing is go down to the very bottom and make sure that the location is the, lo the location box has the uh, check mark in it. And if that is all set, you come over here and just save menu. Okay, now if we go back up to the top corner here and go to the main site you see that we now have our menu up on the top navigation bar. Bio, blog, music, videos, gallery, shows, digital shop, store, press kit, and contact. And the little icon, which is the home. You can see if I go to bio, there's nothing on the pages yet, but you have the pages all in place. Music, videos, and so on and so forth. If you click blog, like I said, that's a category, and it does have one post submitted under blog now, which is Hello World. And you can see if you click Hello World, it will go to that post page, which simply says, Welcome to WordPress. This is your first post. Edit or delete it, then start blogging. Uh, that's how your uh, blog will work. When you click on that, it'll go to that page. Click the Home icon, 
it'll go back to the home page. Now we'll go back into the uh, admin area and we're going to go ahead and load up our plugins. So left column again, go down to plugins, add new. Now this is the area that you would find plugins if you have a need. Uh, you want to find a plugin that might uh, help you, enable you to do what you want to do on your website. This is where you come and search and find them. Uh, we already have all the plugins that we need to use, so or the names of them anyway. So we're going to just go up here on the right top and click in the uh, search plugins. And the first one I'll type in that we need for the site is Q, which is the Q player. And we'll hit enter, hit a, and then go and search, and there it comes up right on the first, uh, first position over here. And so what you do is just go ahead and click install now. I mean, if, if it's a brand new, uh, plugin, you're going to want to review it first. So you'd click on more details, read about it, uh, read reviews about it. Uh, you know, has it been up, updated lately? all that before you go ahead and install it and make sure it's something that you want. Okay, so then you would click Install Now. And it will go ahead and just put it on your site. And it'll ask you to activate plugin or return to installer. We're not going to activate any of these right away, so we'll just go ahead and go back to the installer. And back up to search again. And the second one we're going to look for would be Easy digital downloads and there it is right there same thing just install and then return to installer now just like the pages I'm going to go ahead and install the rest of the plugins so you don't have to uh, watch me do that and then I'll get back to you in just a little bit. Okay, all the plugins have been installed. So now I'm going to go over here and click on plugins. And you can see the list of them all on the site now. The only two active ones are the uh, ultimate maintenance mode that you see there that I use for my test site that you won't have on yours. but And a Kismet at the top. So, um, since we'll be using all of these to set up now that we're going to, when we start building our pages, go ahead and click this top button to highlight all of them and do bulk actions, activate, apply. And now all the plugins are activated. And also you will see that over in your left column, the, uh, the appearance has changed quite a bit. You have a lot more items over here. Playlists, downloads, gig press, uh, Equid Store, avatars, under tools you have more things, users, uh, a lot more items because of the plugins you, that you uh, just installed. So, two final items that we did not take care of yet that I'll do that right now. If you go to Settings, General, you can see the name of the site and the tagline. So you're going to name, this is what the name of your site is going to be. Right now it says View and Do. Uh, just like the other site I did, I'm going to call this Musician Website. And the tagline would be WordPress or DIY Musicians, I believe. Something like that. And uh, then go ahead down to the bottom and just click save
Okay, and the other thing is go to users, all users, and the only user that will be on there will be the admin, which will be you on your install. And whatever you installed, whatever username you used, that is going to show up as a username, and that you can never change that. That's permanent, and that's the administrator. But you can display, uh, you can change the display name. I'll show you how to do that. You go into Edit, and down here, Name. Username says, uh, it's just my email address that I use when I registered this. Uh, but you can put your first name on here. Um, I'll use Johnny. J-O-H-N-N-Y, first name, rocker, last name, um, and for a nickname, instead of admin, I'll change that to just uh, Johnny. And once you have those names inserted, display name publicly as, and you can choose, it'll put, give you a combination, either the email, Johnny, or Rocker, or Johnny Rocker, or Rocker Johnny, okay? We're just going to use Johnny Rocker as our display name. Okay, and then you're going to want to put in the email where you're going to want anyone trying to contact you from your website to reach you at your private email. So, uh, as in this case, I have admin at viewanddo.com. Now, you can set up any number of emails with your hosting account company uh, in the uh, email settings on your host hosting uh, account um, you can you can put in your website here uh, you can put on all your social medias that are showing um, as you go all the way down to the bottom you put in your bio information right here Okay, and then at the bottom down here, you will see the avatar, which is one of the plugins that we uh, included on the site. So you can put an image and uh, simply click Choose Image. I'm going to upload file, so select. And then I'm going to find in my folder the Johnny Rocker Thumb. And we'll open that up and select and it puts the thumb in there so you just want to update profile and uh, that portion is done and there you go the original size and then the thumbnail which both look the same because I cropped it as a thumbnail so um, that's good at this point we're going to uh, leave it at that uh, for this portion of the tutorial. In the next uh, set of tutorials, I will be going through each plugin and showing how you configure those. We'll be setting up the site by putting in all the information, the, the text, images, and uh, it'll start really coming together. So, till the next video, I hope this was. Uh, enjoyable for you, at least that you learned and you're uh, realizing how you can put together a nice musician website for yourself. And I'll see you at the next video. Take care.